My name is Morello Caney, and it's the Hair Debate Show. Yes! Thank you. Today, we're going to be talking about disorders. Because you have a disorder, you, and I know you are battling with a disorder. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Debate where we debunk, debate, and discover all things to us. And welcome back. Yes, my name is Morello Kane. This is the Hair Debate Show. Yes, the home of where we debunk, debate, and discover all things hair. And I have my panelists here with me today. Okay, they are rolling with me all the way from Maryland. All right, we have Dr. Donna. <laughs> yes, Dr. Donna has a doctorate um, as a human sexuality. And then next to me, we have Amanda Nicholson. Yes. Now, Amanda um, is managing in marriage and family counseling. Therapist, you okay? You're doing it, my Amanda. You're yes. doing it. And then we have our revolutionary, okay, revolutionary of Gwinnett. Let me just say that. Um, Dee Hardy of Elevation Hair Studio, salon <laughs> owner. I am Morello Kane, the host of the Hair Debate Show and brand ambassador of Morello on Things Hair Media, where you can also purchase my book, The Seven Love Languages of Hair. So we are going to discuss our topic today, dysphoria. So I know that many of you out there are like, okay, what is dysphoria? So dysphoria is using hair pieces or makeup, could also to be makeup, okay, to camouflage pain, trauma, or faith in oneself, okay, which results in false security, all right, first of all, which results in false security and restricts them from managing stress. So now, guys, when we talk about this disorder, okay, dysphoria, what is that, you know, what does that mean to you? So for me, it makes me think about body dysmorphic disorder. Mm -hmm. I hope I'm okay. That right. okay. So with that, people kind of nitpick parts, you know, parts of their body that they don't really like, or different things of that sort to say, well, this is wrong, this is wrong. And I think that's why we use, you know, hair pieces and weave, especially right. if we don't like our hair. We might say, oh, my hair is too short, my hair is too thin, so I need this, and we keep those things. Dr. Donna, what do you think about that? Definitely agree. Okay. Um, the, the use of all the things that you can to make yourself feel better while not actually liking yourself. So it's one of those situations where baby girl won't go to the grocery store without a full wig, weave well, on. I, it, yes. A beat face. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you need that to take out the garbage, <laughs> you might need to have a discussion. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I'm going to just say... From behind the chair standpoint, I appreciate the disorder dysphoria. Reason being, this is a multi-billion dollar industry. And, and, well, it is. They're making money off of our trauma. Now, that's that's how I feel, all right? Absolutely. They are. Yes. But now, Profiting again. on pain? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no pain. Pain and pain. <laughs> no, absolutely. But, you know, to me, the issue with that is when you can't manage the stress. All right, you're not managing the stress. And so we, we've fallen into this, okay, how can I then turn around and then be acceptable? How can I hide now? Now you're hiding. Okay, so that's the thing, now you're hiding. So now they're making you know, money off Absolutely. of, again, our pain. Yep, and isn't that really the definition of a disorder anyway? Right. Uh, when, right. Things are, when things are not going well for you, and you'll know when you when things switch over for you, you know. Uh, 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 right. Because all of a sudden, you know, things don't feel the way that they used to. You start dreading going to places and start, you, you're just like, ah, oh, no, I have to wear this thing. I have to be this way in order to be in front of other people. When you get there, mm -hmm. you know that something happened. So it's like having anxiety about your hair. No, no. oh, absolutely. Right. Yes. <laughs> like a lot of anxiety, anxiety about and your hair. Yes. <laughs> and you are, and you are. And so I, I tell you, there are some other things that we have to disclose, but we will definitely be right back with you. Stay tuned. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your girl, Carly Red, and you are watching the hair debate. Don't forget to debate about the hair because it's coming soon at to a city near you. And welcome back. Okay, so now... Discussing dysphoria. 
I just want you guys to catch this because again, there are so many people that are battling with this and women, we're not only talking about women because I know some of you men oh! are, de are, are dealing with this as well. So hey, let's again, get into our discussion. Okay, so why are we talking about weave contributing to a disorder now? Because it's been going on. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, I mean, again, these women have been battling this disorder for years. So why are we talking about it now? I think it's good that we talk about it now because we are in the age of everybody having to be on all the time. All the, when I say Instagram, like, ready. Yeah, oh, when I say Instagram and Facebook, <laughs> Snapchat, we have to be on all the time. So it's like your hair got to be on point, your nails, yes. everything. A absolutely, absolutely. So as we discussed previously, it's all about perception. Mm -hmm. okay. and acceptance socially. So if Instagram is telling me or a social media platform in general is saying I should appeal this way via base, celebrity based and or not, mm -hmm. I now feel the need to uh, portray All right. this okay. hair image. Okay. Okay. Hence the reason why the clientele <laughs> when rendering services typically come in with the photo. This is what I want because society yes. has told oh my me God. And they this will. is what I should have. Will. You know. So even going with the dysphoria, they feel compelled to embrace, embody this energy that's coming from an outside source that has now told them they are no longer adequate the way in which they are. Okay, okay. So now let me just say this, and you you made a valid point, D. Hardy. So now let me just say this. When it so how do you because again, there are Many, I, you guys know individuals that's battling with this. So what would that woman look like? Like how could, how would you know? Because just because your girlfriend is wearing weave does not mean that she is walking around, you know, this with for you. So don't get mad and be like, girl. Right. Thank you. <laughs> don't get put out you tonight. Know you, got that, <laughs> you know you got that disorder. They were just talking about it. This with for you. You have a weave. You. <laughs> you have that weave on. I'm just saying, like, so what are some things that you know you could say? Okay, you know, my girlfriend does have this issue. So I would say from like a therapeutic perspective, somebody whose parent or grandparent, like they are always talking about their hair. Like, oh okay. girl, your hair is so nappy. Why you don't press it? Or even like, you know, we're in this mm -hmm. whole natural movement, but even still with that, people are like, mm, natural don't look good on you. Like okay. you can't wear your natural right. hair. Oh, you would be so cute <laughs> if you had <laughs> yes. this hair texture. Or, oh, you would be so... Like, you know, all the people would be calling for you if you wore this weed. Da yes. So the, the constant reaffirmation that something is wrong with you and that if you added something, if you did something different, that now you would be desirable. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. What you think, Dee? It equates back to acceptance. And then, as we spoke previously, equally from childhood, it's a taught behavior. Right. Uh, so though d most disorders are derived <clears throat> from something that has been instilled in us. D in, or has happened to us. Or You're has right. happened. Be right. a trauma right. of some sort, You're regardless right. as to where it's coming from, mm. you ha it's still traumatic for you. Yeah, but so, now we're talking about intergenerational traumas. So yes. our parents give Absolutely. to us what Absolutely. they receive. So Absolutely. if we think about Easter Sunday, the night before Easter Sunday. Oh, you got to get your head done. We get our hair you first. Have to have no, no. the Lord. The hot, uh, right. the hot <laughs> comb, you the hot comb is on the stove. <laughs> and then as you get older, you are on your way to the salon. And then you think, oh, my hair always has to be straight. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But then Absolutely. your hair gets, oh, gets things happen to your hair. So now I don't like my hair at all. So now I need weave. Oh, right. And I don't right. need just any weave. I need that $2,000 weave. Okay. That put the Peruvian hair. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. No Six hundred dollars yes. a bundle. Six bundles please. and two thousand dollar weaves. But but you know what? Also, too, keep in mind these are also people that are hiding. Okay, if you like, girlfriend, I'm on my way over. What now? You like? Oh no no no! I got to do my hair. No no no! You can't come over. You know, and 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 or in or I can't come over. What well, you know? Um, you know, I don't want my mate. No, my mate can't see my hair. Why not? Why, how, how come your mate can't see your hair? Okay, so again, these are the things that we definitely need to talk about. So I tell you, oh, we're going to dig right into this a little bit deeper. All right, but then also, too, um, bring on some guests. So definitely stay tuned. We'll be right back. For more shows like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell to be notified every time the Hair Debate has a new episode. 
Now let's get back to the show. Thank you for tuning in. And again, we're talking about this weeforia. All right, now, let me just say to you guys now, I truly understand what this weeforia is because, again, I battled with that. And I'm talking about to the point where my husband did not see my hair. Guys, I'm here to tell you, 13 years. 13 wow. years. 13 okay. years. And when I tell you, um, literally, he could not see me. All right. So when I went, I wanted to go to bed pretty and wake up pretty. Mm. I, I did. Okay. Again, because again, me going through a trauma of losing my children, you know, took me to, okay, how, and also to being a stylist. And you know how it is, D. Absolutely. Okay. Being in this industry. Um, and, and, you know, when you go out, when you say, okay, I'm a hairstylist. Oh, oh, and you look like that? They assess us first. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and you, it's us, and it's us. Uh, you, you going through what? Okay, mm -hmm. so, so again, they're not understanding. You can't meet someone and say, okay, well, this is what I'm going through, but this is just a day. Tomorrow, <laughs> I'll look better. Right. You can't say that. And so, again, is is you know, how do I get past, you know, how do you get past dealing with your partner and showing them your hair? What if they want to touch and, and snatch that scarf off and with straight shut everything down? All the way. <laughs> and so how can how can we help these these ladies out here? They need help. So how can we help these? What what advice can you give them? I would think about they would need to um, think more about why they have the relationship that they do with their hair. And start mm. there, like, we've talked about trauma, we've talked about family patterns and all that. Everything starts with the relationship that you have with the issue, with mm -hmm. the problem. Right. So why is the problem the problem? And then I believe you can go forward from there. I would even say from behind the chair yet again, consulting with your stylist, because revelations mm. come in many forms and facets. Uh, so now telling your stylist, okay, well, this is what I... Because, again... You you're hiding, okay. You may not you may not want to discuss this with anyone, but again, it's affecting your bedroom. It completely affecting your bedroom. Right. And I would go as far as to say that while it might be nice for you to talk to your stylist, you need a therapist. A a whole therapist. A whole. <laughs> because what one thing that I have found to be completely true is that if you are hiding in one area of your life. You are hiding in many areas of Ooh, your life. Uh, so you hiding your hair on this side of things. Okay. But what are you doing on the other side of things? Right. So right. on the one side, you don't go outside without a full weave and full face. Okay. On the inside of the house, your partner can't touch your hair. You won't let friends come yes. over unless your hair is done. Right. You know, it's got to be laid to the guards. So if, if that's what you're doing, now we're talking about various places of where this one thing is showing up. And not only showing up, controlling your life. Yes. Yep. Yes. So but if we go into it for just a second, back behind the chair yet again. Behind that bedroom. It's an exposure. <laughs> yes. So though you may not have been diagnosed and though you may not have sought mm -hmm. medical treatment as of yet, it's the opening up and the exchange and dialogue. So for myself, when I'm doing a consultation, I ask questions such as, what are your, des your desire goals? What is it you're looking to achieve? And through that exchange and dialogue, I'm able to receive some pertinent information that could then open up throughout this hour and a half service other discoveries, mm -hmm. right? So then you then can say, okay, well, I might need some help. Or I'll tell you, you might need some help. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I am not a doctor. I'm just the yes. doctor that providing checkup from the neck up. Right? <laughs> so yeah, even in that, it's an exchange absolutely. of dialogue and communication. So mm -hmm. ensuring that you're open enough and receptive equally to have that assessment bestowed upon you and then take it and take yourself to the next level, right? No, no. And to do that, you have to be ready. Absolutely. And oftentimes people are not ready. They want what they want in that moment. They just want their hair to be done. They want to look good. They want to be able to go out and be <sighs> doing all of this. You know, right. it's called a hair flip. Mm -hmm. um, they want to do yeah. all of this stuff, but no one wants to do that real work. And I understand why it's scary. Mm -hmm. And, that, and that's it the is. one thing that it you, is. You know, people talk about all the benefits of therapy all day. I'm one of those people, but I also warn people on their first session with me all the other things that can transpire if you decide that you are going to go in and 
really look at where some of this stuff comes from. Because when you really go in and look, I mean, now you stop being friends with certain people. You can't Absolutely. be around certain family members because yes. these are the ones that will always be talking about you. Absolutely. So Absolutely. if your feelings are going to constantly be hurt or you're going to have to constantly check people, you're going to change the way you live your life, but you'll feel free. And then when we talk about it from the perspective of relationships, we're talking about being vulnerable Absolutely. with somebody. So what does yes. that say about you and your partner if you aren't willing to show them who you really are? How long exactly. are you going to let them date? date or be married to your representative versus the real no, you. No, and it's, right. it's time to step out. And I tell you, for me, um, I went to my dermatologist, okay, and she was a part of me stepping out. Mm -hmm. You know, she was a part of that therapeutic. She was a part of me having me to be in front of my husband and saying, okay, it's time to take this thing off. And so with that, that was a part of that freeing. But like you said, Dr. Donna, not only was I freeing that part of me, but I also freed something inside of me as well. Mm -hmm. And so, ladies, I'm here to tell you, um, it's very important out there to seek help, to seek um, advice and whatnot, but then also too, we want to hear from our audience. Okay, so we have a special guest that has stepped in, and she has some a question for us. Okay, uh, you know what? That's very interesting, and I would say that again, it's the trauma. Okay, again, it's the trauma. It's you know, and for him, it's finding out what that trauma is. You know, um, what it something, it, because did you say something before? The childhood, you know, and the different things that we go through in our childhood definitely affects our adulthood. Absolutely. And just thinking again from a male's perspective, um, he is, you know, yet still male. So he could have been brought up in an environment where hair was uh, worshipped. Absolutely. So that could very much so play into his perception of his mate, the mm -hmm. upbringing, childhood, and um, see your local stylist <laughs> and make sure the press is amazing. But I think also we have to remember how much emphasis we put on hair and straight hair yes. at that and long hair. Everybody just feels like if you ha it has to be long, mm -hmm. luscious, flowing hair. We worship But let's long talk hair. about that because I like that we keep saying the word worship because it's literally in the Bible. Right. Mm -hmm. So people are pulling it from Samson. Corinthians. Samson cut his hair. And, uh, yeah, because it's like, yes, your your hair is meant to be your your crowning glory. Absolutely. Your strength. And that um, you should have long, a woman should have long hair, but for a man it is a dishonor. That is what it says in the Bible. And when we're talking about being in America, raised in these Judeo-Christian ethics, okay. we're going to continue to say that your hair as a woman has to be long. Mm -hmm. So there, women have internalized that, but so too have men. Right. So men are expecting that if you are a real woman, you're going to have long hair. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, thank you. Thank you so much because you guys have truly helped us to truly solidify, you know, on what this euphoria is. This euphoria, okay, it is a real condition. Uh, would you guys agree? Absolutely. Well, uh, okay, it is a real condition. And so, again, you definitely want to seek help. So when it pertains to this euphoria, if you are battling with that, you know, definitely you want to talk. You know, definitely talk to your mate. Share what is going on. Don't hide this. You know, don't hide it. Again, if you if you don't have the relationship, relationship, because everyone does not have a relationship with their stylist. And so go and talk to a dermatologist, because let me just say this. If you have been hiding this for years, a dermatologist is going to be able to assess if there's any damage to your scalp, your mm -hmm. follicles. Mm -hmm. And so that's what you want to do. You know, you want to go to a specialist Absolutely. of some sort, you know, Absolutely. therapist, dermatologist, you know, and just talk. And But then also, too, don't go from that disorder to another, you know, just finding comfort in food and whatnot. And so speaking of food, we have someone that we would like to introduce to you guys. Stay tuned. And welcome back. I would like to introduce Chef V of the Hair Debate. Yeah. 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 Chef V! Hey, Chef V! Hey, 
You're oh, welcome. let me tell you something. This right here is amazing. Thank you. You showed out. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh my God. What? So, and you know I'm a Southern girl, so you know how I like grits. Yes. yes. <laughs> so I, when it pertains, and we were just talking about comfort foods, and so I would have to say, you know, again, when it comes to comfort foods and food and and with this this euphoria, you don't want to go from one disorder to another. That's true. You know, so, but now these grits have some things that does complement the hair. Yes, it does. It does. They do. So the grits themselves, they um, they have milk, mm -hmm. three types of cheeses in them, butter, mm -hmm. salt, and pepper. Okay. Now, just so you know, um, mm -hmm. grits do um, <laughs> contain protein. Really? Yeah. Did you guys yeah. know? Uh, oh, that. so you? Got I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm real. You said protein? I'm listening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so grits contain protein, and they also contain vitamin B, in fact. Oh, um, okay. Yes, one cup of cooked Oh, let me one, get my vitamin B. Yeah, one <laughs> cup of cooked grits contains um, um, contains 20% of vitamin B1. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, wow. I didn't yeah. know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. But, I mean, mm -hmm. I would have never thought to put any um, peppers. The peppers are also good for the hair. Um, you have the red peppers, the yellow peppers, and the green peppers. Oh, wow. They actually have the vitamin A and C in them. So okay. that's also good for the hair. Okay. Yes. Uh, get your get your um your veggies and whatnot in. Okay. So you, just you, you definitely want to get that in. Absolutely. Well, see, that's what I'm saying. I would have had no idea. But again, who would have ever thought about placing um peppers and grits? Ding, ding. I would definitely be adding um the Getting my veggies in by adding the peppers to my grits going forward. Yes. But then also, too, you have some other things in here as well. Yes, I have the shrimp, of course, in there. And again, shrimp. Shrimp are a great, a great source of protein, yeah. vitamin B, um, zinc, iron, and vitamin D, which may aid hair growth. They also provide a small amount of healthy um, omega-3 fatty acids. Okay. Well, so. Oh, yes. I'm, I, you know what? I think I'm going to have to prepare this more often. And also, too, iodine. And you know, Dee, that they also, too, iodine is, iodine is great for hair loss. Hair loss, But absolutely. also, too, is added in hair products. One and of the so, four. wow, you can definitely mm -hmm. not only, you know, buy products for your hair right. or whatnot, but then also, too, you can eat it. Yes. <laughs> and the bacon is just a little extra. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I tell you, thank you so much, Chef V. Well, thank you. Okay, for partaking with us today, Shripping Grits. Mm. All right. And so, again, my name is Morello Kane. I thank you so much. This is the home of where we debunk, debate, and discover... All things hair.